that's all good. All right, we're talking to Peter Muscovin, the uh, CEO of uh, Sport NZ. Peter, is sport corruption free in this country? No, I think it is. Overall, it absolutely is. There's nothing would give us indications at the moment that uh, things are, are bad here. But I think we're also not naive. We actually understand there's a big, big world out there, and some of those ills of the global sporting world are coming this way. And we're trying to build up safeguards around it. But overall, you'd have to say that sport is is corruption free, and, and you know, the value of sport in New Zealand is, is high. Is that because of the values we have in this country, or are we just lucky that we haven't been exposed to it? Well, I think it's a bit of both, actually. I think uh, we are one. We do know we're one of the most corrupt-free countries in the world. Uh, and also I think that we have a complete love of sport in New Zealand. You add those two things together, it means that the sport's valued here and it's played played hard and played fair. You know, we've got a great reputation for sport around the uh, internationally. So I think that actually has safeguarded us from the ills of the world. But, you know, we know the world is changing. We'd be naive to sit here and go, the world is going to be good in the future. So. It's, it's a bit of a, uh, a wait and see and put some safety blocks in, in, in place. You're competitive as a sportsman yourself, a representative. And when you think about even starting right from school and going through, has sport, in that sense, has it changed? No. I think it's very much still the way my grandfather and grandmother played sport. I think we are, we are privileged in this country for most people to grow up with a playful, sporty background. Although again, the world is changing. We know people are playing sport in different ways than they ever have been before. Um, and so right now, we've got a new, new strategy at Sport New Zealand all around the value of sport and making sure that we maintain the sporting heritage that we have in New Zealand. And it's a bit of a knife edge at the moment in terms of people not wanting to participate or participating differently than they have previously. Why are they not wanting to participate? Well, I think there's all manner of reasons from sedentary lifestyles to technology to urbanisation. Um, you know, our whole ethnic mix is changing the way people think about sport and play sport. We've, we've all grown up in the country, certainly my generation, the baby boomer generation is the lucky ones. We've grown up in this beautiful, playful um, surroundings that we've taken sport for granted. Uh, I think in some communities, sport is a luxury item now. It's not, it's not a, 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 an opportunity for all. And that's at Sport New Zealand, they're the things that we're trying to improve. How important is it then for the success of sport, for the future of sport, that it maintains its reputation, that people believe that sport is clean? I think that's really important. I think what you just said is absolutely important. The integrity of sport, the value of sport, the, the intrinsic value of sport is compete hard, compete fair, everyone's playing the same game to the same rules, and we'll enjoy the contest. That's what I think New Zealanders grow up, uh, have grown up over the generations believing. What we see now around the world is a change in that, where people are taking shortcuts, they're taking pills and doping and match fixing and these sorts of things to, to get an edge. Uh, and it's just, I guess, the, the commercialization, the monetization of elite sport is changing people's behaviors around it. So if you know it's here, you see it in other countries, what does Sport New Zealand do to I mean, what policies do you have? What, 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 what do you have in place to try and tackle it before it happens and deal with it if it should happen? Yeah, well, I think there's a, a number of things we're doing. One is to, to be absolutely aware that these things are going on. So we've got our antenna out and then internationally looking at those trends, those issues. So from a, from a doping perspective, we feel pretty good in New Zealand at the moment. Drug Free Sport New Zealand has been doing a really good job for a number of years. The area we was, where we are a concern now is match fixing. So when you look at it, there's two things. One, bring laws in. Two, bring policies in. Three, make sure your investigative powers are, are good so you understand what's going on. But probably the biggest one of all is education. How do we get to athletes? How do we get to coaches? How do we get to referees? And make sure that they understand what good practice is and understand when they get themselves into a vulnerable position, they can put their hand up. So we're doing a lot of work around quite world-leading stuff at the moment in those four areas. So how are you getting the message out? I mean, is, is this you doing this through your website? Are you proactively a, approaching the sporting organisations? Yep, so every sporting organisation in New Zealand that receives government funding is required to bring in a match-fixing policy. That policy is to, is to have rules and regulations to ensure that people, one, don't dope, and two, uh, they can deal with match-fixing straight away. Um, we're also providing education uh, both online for athletes and through uh, Drug Free Sport New Zealand. Um, the issue we have now is being able to get down not to our elite athletes, 
but into those that are emerging, those in secondary school today. So if I had a worry, it would be certainly those young kids trying to make first 15s now that want to go on and make all that money in Super 15, um, that you just don't want to make sure they take a shortcut um, and, and do something, you know, make a bad decision. So it's, it's, it's actually getting the education down further in our pipeline. And how do you reach them? I mean, is social media part of that? Absolutely. Or? Yep, social media... Um, uh, d directly through online that we have modules that athletes can go on uh, through Drug Free Sport New Zealand and through the national sporting codes themselves. Uh, through their policy, they've got a requirement to deliver those messages, to get athletes to sign contracts. Um, but it's not only athletes, it's also the entourage around the athlete, the, the agent, um, the teacher, the coach, um, the parent. Sometimes they are the greater driver of those young kids, you know, what they're doing. So it's not only getting to the athlete, it's getting to the what we call the entourage around the athlete. See, it's interesting, I was looking at um, just some Australian research and the scale, it seems so much bigger over there and concerns in lots of different codes, um, horse racing in yep. particular, uh, but, but right across all sorts of things. Uh, we don't seem to have that same reputation or, or the same track record. Is that because we haven't been looking or because just intrinsically, we're, we're fairer, perhaps. Um, I think I think we've come from a fairer background. It goes back to that whole, um, you know, the the uh, the values that we hold in New Zealand and being one of the most, you know, um, least corrupt countries in the world. Um, but I think we'd be naive if we sit in that sort of dreamland and say the world is going to be okay and just because of our isolation we'll be all right. Um, Australia, we look to and clearly organised crime. Anywhere there is a gain to be made financially, organised crime is getting into it. So, you know, here in New Zealand, without question, um, you know, we're working with an integrity um, a unit across uh, government looking at all those opportunities to find out what's going on. We're, we are confident that we have got good measuring uh, sticks in place, but we know the world is, is turning. Um, but we get uh, lots of uh, guidance through that from what's happening in Australia. See, it's interesting, isn't it, because you were talking before about you know, the young people looking at a career in rugby in terms of professional sport, because the, in the past we would have thought about, you know, cycling, uh, cricket, even even now. But there's no, there's no such thing as a sport that couldn't be touched. No. Any time there is a bet, bet placed on a sport, uh, there is an opportunity for someone to be manipulated. And, and there are, um, you know, there are, there are events in New Zealand that TAB take bets on, that are well below our carded or elite athletes. They are in national, provincial championships. And any time, you know, kids in there are young students with um, with um, with student loans. There's any 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 manner of motivation that someone in a weak moment or or is manipulated by someone else that could be vulnerable. We've seen that around the world, and and that's why we need to build this educational. Um, component into what we do in sport. Is there perhaps a space for New Zealand to have a leadership role in, in corruption in sport, given the fact that, because I mean, we have anti-max fi fixing legislation yep. here, I mean, for, for a country in some ways so far away from it, we've taken some quite bold steps. Yeah, we have. I mean, in the doping area, the WADA, we've taken the lead. Uh, Dave Howman, a great New Zealander, has been the Secretary General there for a long time. We, we're actually involved in the governance of that as well. I think internationally now people are looking at what does integrity mean in sport. So typically we had said previously it was pretty much around doping. And now we understand also the earls of match fixing. So our response to integrity and corruption isn't just about dealing with one limit, it's bringing them together. So we are now looking at how we might unify both of those things. We've got Drug Free Sport New Zealand that does a good job. We're now building up our capability around match fixing. How might we bring those together with the rest of government, with police and, and, um, and you know, organised crime, all those things, how do we bring them together to ensure that we have a better response than we are at the moment? Is there, is there just a danger that even by trying to bring in measures to tackle it, it's just association? Because as I said, growing up, none of us would ever thought about corruption in sport, would we? I mean, it was no. just it was a foreign concept. No, no, we never thought the athletes would dope either, and they do. So, you know, we only, sport only mirrors society. There are bad people out there. There are people always out there manipulating things. Sport reflects that. And because sport now is involved with lots of money, um, a lot of reputations, a lot of things on the line, um, people can be manipulated. People make bad decisions, just like they make bad decisions in all other area walks of life. Sport is not immune to that. 
But to take your point earlier, sport brings with it so much value to all sorts of people in, uh, in society. So we have to preserve that. So and the integrity of sport is a very important topic for us right now. One of our other directors was pointing to um, uh, in setting some overseas jurisdictions in terms of sport and their, their websites to have portals on there which can take them through to things like Transparency International. Is there room for that as well, for other people to get involved in what you're doing? Look, I do. Th I genuinely think there there is. Certainly the other thing you ask, what are we doing to, to strengthen and safeguards? One of the things we're doing a lot of work around is governance. If you set any organisation that had lots of money going through it, and I have to say, sporting organisations now are bigger than little small businesses in New Zealand. There's a lot of money flowing through and a lot of accountability and responsibility and risk. So we're doing a lot of work around ensuring that our boards are, are match fit. So that's around good governance. It's around transparency. Um, it's around um, things like uh, conflicts of interest. All of those start, starts at the head of sport and it flows down from there through the sport. Um, and so I genuinely believe that you know th those sorts of things about taking leadership is very important. And as we look, I mean, in terms of transparency international, we look at you know, areas of, of, of governance and areas of uh, business. But sport is just as important, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Well, actually, sport is business. I'm in the business of sport. As much as we like to think it as a, uh, a volunteer, um, you know, um, a movement, if you like. Today, it's a, it's a, it's a serious business. There's a lot of money flying through, a lot of risk, uh, a lot of opportunity for people to behave badly. So, you know, we need to be vigilant, just like anywhere else uh, um, in, in commerce. When you look then at where we are here at the moment, where Sport NZ is at the moment, you're comfortable with the measures in place and what you're doing to try and counter it. Yep. So I, overall, I would say there's a big bad world out there. Uh, that we are somewhat isolated because of our geographical distance, but those behaviours are, are here and coming here, uh, and we need to learn from internationally what's happening and build safeguard mechanisms here in New Zealand to ensure that we preserve and safeguard all the values of sport. Because we look what's happened with FIFA, there'd be the suspicions some people have that within all those individual codes, they manage just to keep it all you know, away from the eyes of people like you. Yeah. It's really interesting though, you look at that, it's certainly around the world of sport. There are people that use their positions for personal gain. Um, in New Zealand, our, our New Zealanders working internationally are hugely regarded. They're safe, they're honest, they're pretty conservative people, they get on, uh, they're not corrupt, and they are highly regarded around the world because of those attributes. That's who we are as Kiwis. And on an international stage where sometimes, you know, you go to other parts of the world where corruption and bribery is part of life, we don't play that game. And so we're seen as a good, solid citizen and trusted by both parties. It's an interesting role we're now playing internationally in sport leadership. But you can never rest on your laurels. Never lost. No, never. Thank you so much, Peter. Now, let me just make sure. <laughs> That's great. That's absolutely perfect.